Hi, this is Patrice with another video on note-taking. This time it's an overview of online note-taking using split-screen view. So in Windows, split-screen can help you take better notes with your online lectures when you, want, when you want to type your notes. And that's usually an approach a lot of students will utilize when they're first starting out with online note-taking. Today we're going to take a look at Word Docs, Google Docs, OneNote, and even how PowerPoint notes can be helpful to you. To start the process, we want to make sure that we have everything set up. We want to make sure we've created a Word document, that we have our OneNote set up, and we also have a Google Doc set up. So whatever you're going to be taking notes and make sure that it's up and ready to go, as well as where you're going to be looking, listening to or looking at your lecture, whether it's live recorded or just a video that your professor wants you to be able to take notes on. So this is great, I've got all, everything set up, but I really can't see both things at the same time. I can't see where I intend to take my notes. At the same time, I'd like to be able to control the video a little bit, especially on a pre-recorded lecture. So in order to do that, I'm gonna use what's called split screen view. In Windows, you hold down the Windows key, you tap the right arrow, and that sends your lecture to the right. Then I can choose where I want to start taking my notes. In this case, I'm going to start with the window document. Let's start. What's energy? This thing is phone class. We do cold calls. So I walk up to Eric and I say, how should we define energy for this class? I define energy. Currency. So we should be doing monetary economics as opposed to thinking about electric power and stuff. Okay. So I'm going to pause right there. So as you see, when I am typing, I'm not super concerned about um, spelling because I know that I can just right click on those little squiggles in Word and correct that. But what about if I prefer Google Docs? So I'm going to hit the Maximize button on both of these and put them back to full view. And we're going to start over again with what happens with a Google Doc. So in this case, you see my Google Doc, my Google Doc is open. It's been titled. It's sitting right next to my lecture. And I'm ready to go. Now, I can go back and forth between these two. But what if I would prefer to have them side by side? Well, you can do that in Chrome by going down to your taskbar at the bottom, right-clicking on your Chrome icon, and choosing New Window. And it's going to open up in a window with you already logged in to all your Google Docs and everything you need. So we're going to go down to my Google Apps. We're going to choose Documents. And once we give it a chance to load, we're going to see that our lecture is right there exactly the way we wanted it. So now, using the same technique as before, I can hold down my Windows key, tap the left arrow, and then choose my lecture. Let's continue on. But if it's just money, then there's nothing special about this class. We could just do plain old price theory, or we could just plain old micro, or we could do plain old, plain old uh, like monetary. Let's see if everybody agrees. Julian, where are you on this? How would you define energy? Okay. We're now we're now into basic physics. Uh, even I remember that. I have an alumnus. Um, perhaps we could be a little less abstract. What are some interesting examples uh, that fit under that very broad 801 heading? <laughs> okay, we're going to stop right there. So pretty much you see me doing the same thing I did. In my Word document, I think sometimes that Google Docs is a little bit easier. So let's take a look at OneNote. Just doing our straight up, just typing in the way we always have. Okay. Let me get rid of this little guy for now. Okay. Make this window larger. So here I am again with my lecture. Arrow key to the right. Then I choose my OneNote. Whoops. There we go.
Let's try that again, okay? And here I have my OneNote, there we go. Sometimes it's hard to have a lot of windows open. So I, here I have my OneNote. <clears throat> See, I've got some notes in here. I kind of knew what it was to anticipate. So one of the things I can do is I can actually do full page view, okay? And I can go to normal view. So full page view is gonna give me a little bit more room to work in, right? I can start taking my notes just like I did before. Nothing different here about that. I have this great toolbar just like with Windows, all right? But the thing that seems to be lacking in all of these, if we take a look at them, is I'm starting from scratch each and every time, right? So it doesn't matter what I'm using, I'm starting from scratch. So what if I had the ability, let's put these back to full size, what if I had the ability to take some of the lecture notes, especially if I've gotten them ahead of time, and utilize those to take more comprehensive notes and feel less rushed? One of the ways you can do that is to maximize the use of the PowerPoint. So if your professor is giving you a PowerPoint, you need to just go to the View menu. We usually start with the Home menu, right? You just go to View, and here is something called Outline View. Now, you can select part of the lecture. Okay, we're going to use the copy and paste sequence. So we select a little bit. We hit Control plus A, select all. Control plus C to copy. And I can go to any one of the documents, and I can, that I was in before, and I can hit Control V to paste. And all of a sudden, I have a really terrific looking set of notes to start with. Now if I do that in OneNote, I should get pretty much the same effect. But if you notice in OneNote, it's a little bit different than Word. I have this huge font. So if you do happen to get really large font, again, using the copy and paste sequence, select part of it, hit Control A, for select all, and go up here to font, and then choose a font that you think overall would be really helpful to you. And what you have now is a really nice outline. So if we go back and take a look at our lecture, okay, and again, remember OneNote, I can make this larger. I can do this in OneNote, I can do it in Word, I can do it in Google Docs. Now, if I start to do this and listen to the lecture. So we can see here we're still in this discussion of defining energy. But if we skip ahead a little bit. Well, except almost all the U.S. power grid is privately funded and privately owned. Not all of it, but most of it. So now we're no, getting no, into no. the meat of the lecture. Now the professor's starting to talk. So whether you add a lot to, this, to the outline now or later, you now have an outline to work from. And that would make, putting this back in the normal view, and hopefully what that will do is it will make it easier for you when you have to type your notes online. Now, if you're interested in what to do with this recording to make it even more helpful to you, then we'll do put that in another lecture. So what I'm gonna do is give you my contact information and you can contact me via email. You can also put comments down in the comments area and I will put a link to some quick guides for this lecture and others on um, line so you can get a hold of those whenever you need them. And if you'd like to see videos on other topics that you're interested in and you think would be helpful, just please let me know. Take care.